Morning everyone, my name's Claire. Um, I've just mixed up some amazing, amazing colours, um, some turquoises and blue um, and a pearl white colour. Um, my plan was to do a lovely swipe, a slightly different technique. I had it all planned out in my head, but then I saw the colours and I just thought, no, this is crying out for a flip cup. Um, so I've added some silicon and I'm just gonna have fun. I'm gonna do one big old flip cup pour. So I'm really excited. Um, so let me show you the colours that I'm using. So here are the colours. I've got two Amsterdam colours. I've got um, Amsterdam greenish blue and I've got Amsterdam sky blue light, um, which I've got here. This colour is just absolutely amazing. It's such a rich colour. Uh, really, really happy with it. I don't think you can probably see it very well at the moment. Um, the I've got two Pebio Studio acrylics colours. I've got iridescent green blue and iridescent um, blue green. Now they look very similar there in the tube. They look a bit less similar here. This is definitely greenier. This is definitely more blue. But when it's actually on the canvas, the difference is much much greater. And then I've got two De La Rowney graduate acrylics, Thalo turquoise and pearl white. Um, these paints. This time I have actually just mixed with this, which is the UK version of Fluoratrol and it's called Oatrol. The only reason I've used that is because I want to use it up. <laughs> I want to, to finish it so it's one less bottle on my shelf. Um, and I so I have mixed everything 50-50. So no, not 50-50, sorry, two parts pouring medium, two parts Oatrol to one part paint. Um, and at the moment I haven't added any extra water. Um, it's quite thick. I might add a hint of water, not sure yet. Um, and then I've added three drops of um, spot on treadmill silicon. Let me get it to show you. This spot on treadmill silicon, three bo uh, drops of that into each cup. So I've just checked the consistency of all the paints. Um, the non-iridescent colours are fine, but the iridescent ones just are a little bit thicker. So I've added a dash of water to them. So if I just try and show you how thick this is, much thicker than my normal consistency. So you can see it just leaves a trail on the surface of the paint for a few seconds. So it's very, it's really quite thick, but it's just nice. It's just got a nice creamy smooth feel to it. The iridescent ones, it feels about the same. Um, it's very difficult to tell with iridescent paints because they leave a trace on the surface, even when it's not raised. You can you can just see like the sort of the lines in the paint. Um, so that's that's the sort of consistency I've got. Um, I'm going to do just one big cup, and I have not done this for a really long time, so I'm really excited about this. Um, this is the order I'm going to do. I've um, the iridescent paints here, here, and here. I, so I've mixed, I've separated those. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll start this end. Um, I'm just going to pour. Oh, that's, I better get rid of my, just put my stick to the side. I'm going to pour a nice layer on the bottom. Maybe slightly more. And then move on to the next one. Because these are so thick, the paints just sit on top of each other. So they don't really blend, don't really um, mix at this point. So this is the iridescent green blue. And then the phthalo turquoise is gorgeous. These are such, these are definitely my favorite sort of colors. I like my violets, but I also like my turquoises. Right, that's the first layer down, done. So let's go for a second layer.
The canvas I'm using is a 40 centimetre square canvas. Um, I've just hammered in big push pins into the back um, and then I've just checked that it's level with the spirit level. Um, so I'm happy, happy it's level. Because this paint is very thick um, and it's, there's going to be a lot of paint on the canvas at the end, if it's not level it will slide as it's, as it's drying. It's happened to me lots of times in the past that I've been happy with the painting then I've gone back to it and it's moved and it's totally destroyed any cells I had. Um, so I have a very, very full cup of paint. This is a plastic pa uh, pint cup, so it's a lot of paint. So I think, I'm, I'm worried about spilling it, so I think what I might do, instead of actually just flipping it, is I'm going to flip the canvas, I think. I'm going to put the canvas on top of it. Oh, it's <laughs> spilling over my hand, I can feel it. There we go. There we go, onto, onto my hand and flip it like that. Look at the cells on my hand. It's so pretty. Right, I'm just going to go and clean my hands. So to flip this over, I think I am simply just going to tip it and all the paint will come flooding out. I've got a lot of paint, um, so I think I'm just going to tip it and just let it, let it do its own thing here. I'm just going to grab the edge of the canvas though, just in case it decides to shoot over the edge. Right, I'm just going to put that cup there just so I can just um, get any drain bits of paint that can drain down just to wet the edges of the canvas. Wow, love the colours, love the colours. Right, so I've got cells already and that's before torching. That often happens if the paint's a bit um, on the thin side. So I'm a bit surprised. I didn't think it was particularly thin. Actually, and I've got a little bit of this green left, so I'm just going to put this on as well. None of this will show at the end, it's just something for the paint to slide over. So the big question is when to torch this. Um, if I torch it now, because I've got a lot of stretching to do, I'm going to get some really big cells. So I quite like that, but I don't want them huge. So I think what I'm going to do is do a little bit of tilting um, and then torch and then tilt again. So I'm going to tilt first of all, I think, over here because there's most there's most paint over there. So I'm just I'm really just going to get the, the a lot of this canvas covered, I think. Now I'm just going to use a corner attacher. Although I've got a lot of paint, I'd like to keep the paint on the canvas. So I'm just putting a piece of cardboard at that corner. So if I can then tilt down to this corner, it's just going to stop it running over the edge. It will cover the canvas, but without losing the paint at the moment. And then I can tilt it off later. So if I just gently take that away, it just, caught, it just helps that paint just to fall down the edge. So the edge is covered. So let me try and show you. I think the edge is covered there. Right, let's torch this now, I think. There's a lot of air bubbles in it.
Right, I'm just going to give that a second just for the, the cells to open up a little bit. Just torched again because I'm a bit disappointed that I haven't got much of this really really dark colour and I'm not sure by even by the tilting it's going to really bring that through. It's quite it's quite a pastel-y um, shades at the moment. Right let's do a bit more tilting. So I'm tipping the canvas back and forwards. If you just let the cam all the paint flow in one direction it really distorts all of your cells so the idea is if you can keep going back and forwards it will just stretch the cells out but keep try and keep a bit more of their regular shape right let's go off this corner now Just bringing the weight of the paint back towards the centre. Again, I'm just bringing the weight back to the centre and then I can have a look at it and decide what I'd like to do. If I'd like to keep tilting, decide which bits I like, which bits I don't like, which bits I can tilt off if I need to. Right, it has actually opened up this more, this darker colour. So I guess I should be really happy that darker colour hasn't taken over. I just wish there was a bit more of it. Composition wise, I'm actually really happy. I've got such a mixture of cells. I'm just going to wash my hands and then I'm going to torch again. Right, I think I am done actually. I've got quite an even sized cells everywhere, slightly smaller in this corner, but I don't think that matters. I'll just maybe just try stretching that corner out just slightly. Right. I'm actually really happy. It's not quite as I thought it would be, but I really like it. Right, let me show you. Right, so here it is. Um, unfortunately, it looks very, very blue on the camera. It's not at all. It's really, really green. Um, hopefully, when it's dried, I'll be able to put it in a different lighting and you'll be able to get a much better idea of the colours. Um, let's go in. It just It's just not... It's just not doing it dust justice on the camera, unfortunately. So this really dark colour here is like, it's just the most amazing dark turquoise and it just looks blue <laughs> in this light. Um, the cells are lovely. So you've got a real selection. You've got really round ones, really irregular cells, cells inside of cells, lots of different colours, um, lots of different sizes. Um, so... I'm actually now standing back and having a good look at this. I'm actually really happy with it. It's going to be quite a delicate, quite a soft painting. There's not a lot of um, contrast, so it's not quite as bold as a lot of my paintings. But actually, um, 
really pretty. Oh, I wonder if I stand round this side. Sorry, I'm just going to move because I thought I could see the colour a bit better. Does it look a bit more turquoisey? Maybe there in that reflection. No, it still looks very blue. Um, I think as well, once this has dried, it will change quite a lot because there's a lot of iridescent colour in this. I'm hoping that it will just really shine. So I will be back once it's dry. I'm so, so happy with the colours. Absolutely love the colours. So I was worried there wasn't enough dark, but now I'm so happy with the dark colours. Um, everything dries darker and I know that, but I think I just forgot because look at all of this. It, it, originally this looked quite a mid colour, but now it's just turned into this wonderful, wonderful dark um, turquoisey greeny colour. So I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon with the balance of light and dark in this piece. It's just, it's just spot on. Um, so there's dark in, in sort of all the four corners and then you've got this wonderful um, pale section in the middle which is really nice and pale, really nice and light in colour. Um, I just, I love the composition because you've got, you've got a kind of sort of wave around here and a line so it's not just, it's not all even all over the painting, it's, it's just quite an unusual composition. Um, as always, I love my iridescent colours and this just comes alive when I show you how iridescent this is. Um, the colours are, are, they're just absolutely beautiful. You're not even getting a true sense of these, how iridescent these are at the moment. Um, but everywhere there's beautiful shimmer from the turquoises, from the pearl white. Yeah, just so, so pleased with it. It's quite a subtle painting um, because it's all the same sorts of colours, but I'm really pleased with it. Do let me know what you think. Please do leave me comments if you like it. Um, if you don't like it, any any thoughts, any comments at all, I'd love to hear um, what you think. Great, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope everyone's okay. Take care. Bye.